Well, tonight you will have another chance to give the U.S. Department of Justice your two cents on how to reform Albuquerque's police department. And if this meeting is anything like the one from last night, it is going to be packed and full of emotion. It was standing room only here at the Alamosa Community Center last night where folks were supposed to break into small groups with federal workers. Instead, they kept demanding answers. Answers to questions such as, will bad cops be prosecuted? Others stress the need for lapel cameras to be turned on and to work all the time, particularly in light of the deadly Mary Hawk shooting involving APD from last week. I, I don't think that this was a forum to, to get answers. I think they were just looking for input, unfortunately. There is going to be something done, you know, but the public's got to have some patience. Again, you have another chance to voice your opinion about APD reforms to the U.S. Department of Justice tonight. You can head to the Palo Duro Senior Center from 5 to 7 or go to the Cesar Chavez Community Center. That meeting is tomorrow night. Now, for more information about all of these meetings and to check out the full report from the Justice Department, head to our website anytime at krqe.com. Almost 200 state employees who drive vehicles funded by taxpayers have had their driving privileges suspended. The General Services Department said the workers had violations ranging from DWI to driving with revoked licenses. The agencies with the most workers suspended are from the Department of Health, Taxation and Revenue Department, and Human Services Department. In the last 10 months, there have been nearly 900 reports of state employees breaking a driving rule. It looks like the plan to close the Santa Fe Plaza to all drivers in an attempt to make it more pedestrian friendly is changing a bit. At a city meeting last night, Mayor Javier Gonzalez proposed closing the plaza to all cars only during part of the year, not year round like he originally suggested. The mayor now wants to close it to vehicles from Memorial Day to late summer after the Santa Fe Fiesta's weekend. He wants a car ban in place by later this year in time for the summer tourist season. Well, the search is still on for one of the two men from northern New Mexico accused of trying to steal $1.3 million in state and federal unemployment benefits. Investigators say Jason Gonzalez and Gerald Archuleta filed false claims with the names of real people from New Mexico, Texas, and Colorado. The debit cards were mailed to a post office box where investigators say those two picked them up and cashed them in. Gonzalez pled not guilty to a list of federal charges yesterday. The investigators are still looking for Mr. Archuleta. The woman at the center of a scrapbook scrap at a senior center near Albuquerque has passed away. Yeah, we first told you about Doris Lark two months ago when she and her friend were banned from a senior center by the village mayor. Floyd Watson was with Lark in court last month. The head as mayor, Gloria Chavez, accused the two of stealing scrapbooks from the village's senior center. Lark claimed that she paid for and made the scrapbooks. The two women were determined to win their cases in court, but Doris Lark won't get a chance. You see, she died over the weekend. The 71-year-old struggled with health issues, but her family says that the added stress from the ban and her court battle made things worse. I just had visions of all this mess being over and marching triumphantly through the door with Doris, you know, and, and just not, no big deal, just sitting down and doing our darn crafts together. Watson hopes to win the case for both of them. The Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department has insisted on pressing misdemeanor charges in this case. Well, could Tesla say adios to New Mexico and hola to California? Well, Tesla has said it plans to build a $5 billion battery plant either here in New Mexico, in Arizona, Nevada, or Texas. There are supposed to be five fin four finalists, and it would give jobs to 6,500 people. But according to the Los Angeles Times, uh, California state legislators are trying to woo the company to build there. Tesla's already converting a huge plant into one of its factories in Lathrop, California. Tesla has also signed leases for more than 625,000 square feet of real estate there, but hasn't said what it plans to do with all that space. One of the big keys for Tesla, economic incentives. Well, the search is intensifying today for the source of the underground radiation leak at the WIP here in New Mexico. Last week, investigators reached the underground storage at site called Panel 7, where the radiation is coming from, but they had to leave before they could figure out exactly where the leak started. When they go down again, they'll stay longer and take equipment that will help them see a little better. The leak happened back on Valentine's Day. And investigators say it released low levels of radiation and contaminated 21 workers. 
For the second year in a row, New Mexico has ranked number one in the country for childhood hunger. According to the Map the Meal Gap, 29% of New Mexico kids are growing up hungry. That is one in three folks. The county is with the highest rates. Luna County has 40%. McKinley, Cibola, and Sierra have 32%. Again, these are all the counties within the state that have the highest rates. Statewide, when you add in adults who go hungry, New Mexico comes in fourth. Here's a bit of good news for you this morning. More students in New Mexico will soon be able to take college courses in high school. The national nonprofit group College Board is giving New Mexico $733,000 for advanced placement classes. The college level courses give students the chance to earn college credits in high school. The governor says it will give more low income and minority students a chance to get into the program. A mega sports complex on the west side of Albuquerque is a step closer to becoming a reality this morning. The city is spending 2.8 million bucks to buy 81 acres next to the new APS football stadium. The city and APS want to add soccer and softball fields and tennis courts, making it the go-to sports complex. APS would like to build an elementary, a middle, and a high school across the street someday. The city is looking for ideas before they start building the sports complex. Well, get your resumes ready. Sidetel is holding its first job fair to hire more than 250 people at its call center in Albuquerque. That's today. The telemarketing company says 150 of the jobs will be permanent. The rest will be seasonal. The company is having the first of three job fairs. Again, it's today. It's from 9 to 4 at 4420, the 25-way in northeast Albuquerque. You can also apply online. Go to krqe.com. Click on the story for the information. 